morning. I'm Mother Vanessa here at St. James. Welcome to our Sunday worship. Once again, we are in our children's chapel, reserving our primary church space for in-person worship at 8 o'clock. We'll be using the Book of Common Prayer, which is found at bcponline.org, or your own copy from home. We start on page 355, page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. I am gathered here only with my household, so I'm not required to wear a mask. But if you come to church on Sunday, or we were gathered with other people here, you would need to wear a mask. Page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. On page 356, let us join together in the Gloria. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for our glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect of the Day is for Proper 11, found on page 231 in the Book of Common Prayer. Collect for proper 11. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, God, the fountain, fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not, and for our blindness we cannot ask, through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The readings and the sermon by our deacon Daniel Hind come next. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from of old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it, you are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join us in sharing a Psalm 86 verses 11 through 17, found on page 710, 710 in the BBC in the BCP. We will share the psalm responsively, breaking at the asterisk. Psalm 86, beginning at verse 11 on page 710. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Knit my heart to you that I may fear your name. I will thank you O Lord, my God, with all my heart. And glorify your name forevermore. 
for great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the nethermost pit. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent men seeks my life. They have not yet set you before their eyes. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion. Slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed. Because you, O oh Lord, have helped me and comforted me. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 to 25. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved, now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house and his disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed 
is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of our ever-present and ever-loving God, Son, and Holy Spirit. Several weeks ago, Colleen and I decided to take a road trip because we felt like we needed to get out of the house for the day. We started out by driving out to Bellwether Farm and Retreat Center in Wakeman. When we arrived, we spent some time talking with Kyle, the farm manager, and also with Bishop Hollingsworth, who just happened to be there also. We walked through the barn to see the new baby goats and the baby chicks and ducks. And then we took a walk through the farm itself. It was amazing to see all of the new growth springing out of the ground. There were many types of lettuce, new garlic, onions, tomatoes and peppers, and even some rhubarb. It was as if we were witnessing a field of new growth springing forth from the ground. I've always been fascinated with seeing fields of corn and soybean as we drive down country roads. The crops are all in neat rows that seem to move with the changing landscape, and they sway in unison with the breeze. It's like seeing God's perfect plan at work. Farming can be a very rewarding occupation because you're providing food for the world around you, but it can also be very nerve wracking. You worry about having enough rain to water the crops, and you hope that your crops are not overrun by insects and disease. It's a combination of trusting Mother Nature, trusting in the science and hard work. In the end, you are rewarded with the knowledge that you've produced something wonderful from a small seed. In today's gospel reading, we hear Jesus telling a parable, comparing the kingdom of heaven to someone who has planted good seed in their fields. But during the night, an enemy comes and plants weeds among that wheat. When the workers see the weeds amongst the wheat, they ask if they should go out and gather up the weeds. The one who planted the good seeds tells them to leave the weeds because they could harm the young wheat by pulling out the weeds. When harvest time comes, the one who planted the wheat will tell the reapers to gather up the weeds first because the wheat will be strong enough and to bundle the weeds and burn them and then gather up the good wheat and place it in the barn. Now the disciples, being the disciples, ask Jesus to explain this parable to them. He tells them that the one who plants the good seed is the son of man, and that that good seed are the children of the kingdom, which he plants in this world. The weeds are children of the evil one who try and destroy the good seed. In the end, God will send his angels to gather up the children of the evil one and throw them into the furnace of fire. And then the angels will gather up the children of God where they will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. What could we possibly glean from this parable that Jesus is sharing with us today? Is this strictly a story about good against evil? Or is it a story about God's judgment over all evil at the end of time? I think the lesson of this story is that we are the children of God, the good seed, 
need to know and understand that even though God, God plants and nurtures us in this world, we need to realize that we are surrounded by evil things in this world and that that evil tries to uproot us from the presence of God and each other. We see evil in so many different forms and manifestations in this world. We witness senseless gun violence in our streets. We hear and see people belittle and harm each other because of the color of their skin or their sexual orientation. We see others look down on those who are struggling with homelessness and hunger. And we see those who push aside and forget our elderly loved ones. All one has to do is pick up a newspaper or watch the news to be aware of the evil that is part of everyday life. So how do we stay strong like the wheat amongst the weeds? First and foremost, we need to remember that as the children of God, we are placed in this world by our Father in heaven. And as we grow stronger together in faith and communion, we can stand tall against the evil around us and then in turn reach out together to surround the evil of this world with God's love in action. By reaching out in loving action, all those who are affected by violence, loneliness, hatred, and indifference, we can truly come together as the children of God. And when the great harvest comes, we will be gathered up together in our Father's house. And by our ministry of love to those affected by evil, we can come all come together in fellowship and love in the presence of our great God. Let us pray. O oh, gracious Father, who opens thine hand and fills all things living with plenteousness, bless the lands and waters and multiply the harvests of the world. Let thy spirit go forth, that it may renew the face of the earth. Show thy loving kindness, that our land may give her increase, and save us from selfish use of what thou givest, that man and woman everywhere may give thanks to thee, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with the Nicene Creed on page 358. Page 358, the Nicene Creed. We believe, we believe in one God, the, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We'll be using Form 4 for the prayers of the people. Page 388, Form 4, the prayers of the people. The congregation's response is, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name 
may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others, and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue with the Confession of Sin on page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with you. you. Peace be with you. On behalf of the vestry and treasurer, I invite your gifts of time by praying and reaching out to one another. Your monetary gifts may be given by mailing in a check, using your bank's online tools, or donating online at our website or the diocesan website. If you wish to donate toward the needs of the feeding ministry, we are open at 8 a.m. and you can drop off your gift of food at that time, the, the um, uh, non-perishable food that the lunch program requests in our newsletter. If you are going to be here Sunday at 8 a.m., you can call ahead and find out when to leave it with the office. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
C on page 369 in the Book of Common Prayer, Eucharistic Prayer C. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them, them to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory, glory to you forever and ever. At your command all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will they were created and have their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust and we turned against one another. Have, have mercy, mercy, Lord, for, for we, we are sinners, sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By, By his blood he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate, we celebrate his, his death, death and resurrection, resurrection as, as we await, await the, the day of his coming. coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God, and Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your Church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The body of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. As your priest, I will consume the elements on your behalf while Mark and Vivian lead you in a prayer for spiritual communion. O, o Lamb, Lamb of God, in union with, with the faithful at every altar of your church, church my heart offers you praise and thanksgiving. I love you above all things, and I earnestly desire to receive you into my soul. And although I cannot receive you sacramentally, I invite you into my heart spiritually. May my soul be fed by this spiritual food, and may my heart know you more dearly in the breaking of this bread. Amen. We'll continue on page 365, page 365 with the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. I hope you're able to join us for our Zoom coffee hour at 1130. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.